Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Anna Rock. Anna is a scientist, researcher, and creator living in Austin, Texas. Um, Anna has been working for Harvard, MIT, and Tufts doing research over the last 10 years, and she is now pursuing art full time. Anna, welcome to the pod. Hi, thanks for having me, Spencer. Thanks for coming on. It's good to have you always. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so um, for the last 10 years, I've been doing neuroscience and biomedical research, um, working with animal models and cells. Uh, I was very much a, a crazy rat lady for a while, and I did brain surgery in monkeys. And now awesome. I am taking some of the insights from research and applying it to art. Um, and I am in the process of creating a, a bio art science studio here in Austin, Texas. That's awesome. That's really, 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 really cool. So yeah, we talked a little bit about this today. And I guess let's, I want to hear more about what you're doing now. And then maybe for the viewers, I, I we can go into your past too, because that's <laughs> interesting stuff. Uh, we actually recorded a whole other episode, but we couldn't use it for reasons I won't yeah, go into. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, right now I've been working with uh, this speakeasy that is known on the outside as a, the floppy disk repair shop. Actually. On the inside <laughs> as the redheaded stepchild, which is a Texas chainsaw massacre themed speakeasy. That's fun. Um, and I've been doing installations for them and uh, they came to me and were like, hey, uh, we really want chandeliers made out of chainsaws, axes, and uh, dolls. Jesus uh, Christ, cover our... your ass on the liability. I'm serious about that. Oh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, so that's been fun. Um, and so as I'm doing that, I'm learning a lot about like the fabrication processes of metal, um, yes. which is directly playing into building my bio art lab where i'm going to be making kombucha leather uh as well as mycelium leather what's kombucha uh, leather, the... leather uh so kombucha is a co-culture basically it's a it's a bacteria and a yeast that live together and they create the mother which is kind of this like thick gelatinous uh living creature and if you grow them in big bathtubs <laughs> uh you can basically get this biofilm that's interesting and if you process the biofilm yeah, if you process the biofilm um, and you dry it and treat it with like plasticizer, you can make uh, like a vegan sustainable leather out of it. But it's probably like, um, and, it's probably looks better than pleather, I would assume, because it's actually biological. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. A little bit more organic. Um, so I'm going to try to see how uh, people haven't tried dyeing it yet. And I love fluorescence and bright colors. So I'm going to see how that goes. And then hopefully I'll also be doing uh self-genomic experiments um, interesting what does that look like is that like a CRISPR uh, kit or like yeah 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 so uh it's very so you the, <laughs> like, odin, yeah the odin is a not surprised in the slightest absolutely so yeah the odin is a biohacker space that was in oakland california and recently moved to austin and they have cool. like uh they have like at-home CRISPR kits which is pretty cool um I won't be using CRISPR for the first round, uh, but I will be using their like at home uh, genetic analysis kit, which basically is a PCR kit. So it includes like a thermocycler and I'm going to be designing primers for parts of my genome that I love. So, you know, uh, I mean, let's just say that I was very fond of my eye color, which, you know, it's fine. Yeah. I could basically design primers for the genes that uh, are responsible for my eye color, amplify them using PCR, and then basically uh, make a complement to the DNA that is in the reverse direction. So it's not degradable with heat or pressure. And then put work? it in a vial um, and give parts of my genome to people. I, I'm not a breeder, so this is one way that I can kind of like make my mark on the world. That's cool. Uh, so one thing that I really like about myself is I really like uh, the, mm, I would say the, the rhythms of my dopamine regulation. Um, <laughs> you elaborate I on think that, that my oh, dopamine that. reuptake uh, transporters are... A little unusual. Uh, they ebb and flow, and I guess don't 
don't work in the most normal ways, but they make me a very creative person. So I want to yeah. look at what that looks like and create art out of that. When I would say like from having been your friend for most of our lives, I mean, you're an incredibly fun person to be around. I would assume there's a relation there. Absolutely. I mean, the dopam the dopaminergic systems are very much implicated in novelty seeking behavior, oh, creativity, amen, <laughs> and generally just being an awesome person to party with. Um, <laughs> cool again all around. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think that this will be very fun and turn into a lot of projects over time. Um, and currently, I'm actually uh, doing this interview from a place in Austin. Um, it's an artist community called The Heart Yard. Cool. Uh, and cool. my studio uh, is being built on these premises. That's awesome. What was the car you said you were in? I, I remember you briefly oh, mentioned I'm it. I'm in a 1963 Cadillac that Sweet. had suicide doors. It's <laughs> uh, turquoise with a turquoise leather interior, and it's beautiful. That uh, is a sexy car. <laughs> oh, it's a very sexy car. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, it has uh, cigarette lighters in every single door um nice bench seat no seat belts uh <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking hilarious <laughs> yeah so it's pretty great um but yeah it's um it's interesting being an artist now and doing that full time and going from like spending 50 60 hours in the lab working with rats or monkeys um on various technologies from uh like closed loop drug dosing systems um, loop that, on uh, like that are neural implants in monkeys to uh alginate uh, biomaterials for use in surgeries um and you know doing imaging uh on a 924 we... tesla mri so it's been you know my life is never boring <laughs> can we talk about uh, closed loop drug administration for a second just because sure I... Sure. As as the robotics engineer, I actually know what the word closed loop means. So I'm clowning on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Um, so I can't so, say too too much about it, but sure. um I was in uh in a lab at MIT that focused on anesthesia. Okay. And uh anesthesiologists have a high insurance rate because it's a super risky uh field of medicine. I mean you're basically bringing someone very close to death without killing them and bringing them right back. Nice. So getting human error out of it and actually looking at the way brain, the brain responds to anesthesia or any drug in general, that's pretty novel. Um, and so processing uh, electrical activity in the brain on a closed loop system to uh, dose drugs perfectly yeah. would eliminate a lot of the human error. Um, it was very technically complicated, super interesting. Um, monkeys are not my favorite species to work with. Uh, that makes sense. But yeah. yeah, super, super interesting. Um, it's it, working, uh, working on this project kind of showed me how much uh, Neuralink is old technology that's like 15 to 20 years old and like not that interesting. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that. Like, um... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I have a buddy at Colonel who I tried to interview for this podcast, which is their non-invasive competitor, and he couldn't say anything about what he was doing because it's, uh, you know, it's all proprietary. And so mm -hmm. it was, it was, I couldn't use the episode because we just heard, told dirty jokes the whole time and didn't actually talk about our body of work. And so, <laughs> yeah, it was, it, you know, whatever. I mean, and I think at one point, well, I'm not going to repeat it because I couldn't air the episode. <laughs> That's all a very distasteful joke. And I'm like, this is going to yeah. be career endingly bad. I just got to, I got to shelve this one. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, maybe one day, him and I worked together at SpaceX. Um, he did like stand up comedy. It was, it was definitely the funniest episode I ever Ooh. recorded. And from that perspective, like, I would like to release it, but it, uh, it's not at all professional. It's, so, it's also so tough because, like, a lot of the coolest projects are so, I don't know, they're just like, they're under NDAs and sure. you just really can't talk about it. And that is what's really awesome. Um, yeah, no, I can't talk about is, my, uh, my most interesting stuff. 
Yeah, and it's like it's like oh well, who's funding it? Blah blah blah. blah. I mean, one thing about me as I mean, you've known for a long time is I'm very transparent. Yeah. Um, That's one kind of, of how I, I do. You. Like I, you know, it's a uh, it's an interesting way to live, but uh, it keeps me honest. And um, so I want to make all of my methods on how I'm doing, say, like the mycelium leather completely open source and available for everyone. Cool. Um, I really do. I really don't like the thing is, sure, someone can pick it up and try to make money off it. Well, I mean, if they try to patent it, I'll be like, hey, this is this was my idea that I put out there. Like, I don't want you to patent it. I really want well, you, you to. Here's the thing with patents. Uh, it should, yeah. Um, you can't patent anything that's already out there. Uh, it's got to be a secret exactly. one you patent it. Exactly. So if you open source it, it's considered prior art and it can't be patented. So. It, exactly. So, and the thing is, it's not like I don't want people to do what I'm doing and improve it at all. That yeah. would be ridiculous. So, um, uh, here at the Heart Yard, where I'm at right now, yeah, and where my studio will be on Sundays, oh, there's fuck a yeah. weekly. Uh, yeah, there's like a weekly uh, art day, and yeah, uh, and where just everyone just like does art from the Austin artist community. You just like you know, there's people painting on canvases and building things, and it's really cool. And so I hope to have uh, open studio uh, hours and on Sundays, and actually show people the lab and have kind of like these science tutorials where I'm showing them how like what the science of whatever i'm doing actually is and being really open about it and not being like oh it's akin to magic and be like no no no, it's way cooler than that it's science bitches. my world's most simple <laughs> robot tutorial i made years ago is up to like twenty thousand hits or so so i, I did this instructable really where that was my goal what, nice. was, what did the robot do that's uh, awesome it just bumped against things and kind of got itself out of out of obstacle jams but all it is is it's it's two feeler switches with like little paper clips as antennae on them, and then it bumps up against something and reverses the opposite motor to what it bumped up against by using mm -hmm. really 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 simple electronics, and it, it doesn't awesome. even have any microcontroller really in it. Cool. And I wanted to make a series of ones where if you built the first one, you could then you know put a brain in it and then start to make it more intelligent. But I don't know, it's too many things to do, and so I didn't, didn't do it. I mean, there's always a million things to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping to uh, expand upon this one project that I was working on. Uh, basically, it's, it's a beginning of a series called Wear Your Emotions. Oh, cool. And so on YouTube, there's uh, my stress collar, which I think I've told you about. You've told me, but I would like um, to hear it again. Uh, um, yeah. Because it's yeah, the opposite sure. of what you think it is if you're listening to this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So, um, so it's a collar that projects spikes whenever I'm stressed out based on uh, the galvanic skin response. Um, so basically it looks at, uh, so when you're stressed out, you sweat a little bit, uh, yeah. as yeah. I like to refer to it in my notes as a micro sweat. <laughs> um, and so when you're stressed out, you have a small difference in, uh, in the, like, I, I guess, Let's just say roughly the electrical potential between two points. There's a differential, More and so conductive. measuring that and doing signal processing on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just it's just looking at like how conductive a single point relative to another point is. Yeah, and when you and secrete so salt water, it gets more so. Stuff. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So um, you have to apply yeah, a so low pass filter. What? Do you have to apply yes. like a low pass? Yeah, I would think so. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. So like just getting it like just right was tricky but it was fun um definitely like having it uh not go too fast uh was <laughs> good because then it was just you know flinging projectiles everywhere uh but i imagine it was kind of jerky too like even if there wasn't a secure issue with the, mm -hmm. the spikes and making it making it smooth and having it kind of like be like breathing uh yeah. was definitely a design challenge um uh, so I'm making silicone skins for it, and I hope to make a second video oh, on cool. how I made it better. Find it anarock.com, I think. Yeah, anna-rock.com. Anna-rock.com. Uh, anna um, yeah. What was uh, planted on a rock? I remember seeing that somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. I love, by the way. It, it's 
Oh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know. I had a really interesting talk with this artist today um, about how how she describes my art um, or describes me as a multi hyphenate, which a I love. Yeah. That, yeah. That's... that's as a noun. And I guess it could also be an adjective. Um, yeah. Uh, it's just because like it's like oh it's like what do you do? It's like well a lot of things. A bunch of stuff. Uh, <laughs> This and that. Yeah. Yeah. This, that. A little bit of neuroscience Uh, research. No big deal. (laughs) Yeah. Definitely. So, I don't know. Uh, It's, um, I mean, that's why I think I always keep coming back to art because uh, is there really a definition of art? I don't know. Somebody Um, said to me once, and I like this one, um, there was a guy that, makes robots for the education industry which like god bless him it's a tough nut to crack but he oh, said yeah. art is a projection of the artist's ego or like something like and i, I thought that was an interesting definition mm. like you mentioned not wanting to have kids he said i'm not a breeder and i kind of i'm in a similar boat myself i don't think i'm gonna have yeah. kids I, I might but i I'd probably not like I haven't, I haven't decided for sure i'm not but like i'm probably not and so, like, I, um, yeah, yeah, I've tried to find I other mean, ways like, to get my influence I, I out as well. Be, I don't want to be pregnant or any of those yeah, things. Yeah, and I don't really want to like, be having to take time away from my life to raise another one. Like, I'd, I'd much rather just live my life and enjoy it and, you know, focus on my work and things I can control. I don't know. Anybody can have a kid, right? I mean, it takes real creativity and intelligence to <laughs> make something different. That sounds really bad. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I have this weird belief that I think, uh, I mean, there's uh, some scientific impossibilities, um, but uh, I think everyone should be reversibly sterilized. um, Not a bad idea. um, And so basically, if you wanted to have children, all you'd have to do is just go to the city hall and sign a piece of paper, you wouldn't have to pay anything, and say that I want to intentionally have children. The population rate would go down substantially if you did that. Oh my god. What you if couldn't do that legally in America. What's that? I don't think that what would be a bad every- thing. I mean, well, so I, I do and I don't. So if I'm getting philosophical, and, and this is probably more political than I should be on this platform, but whatever. My thing is I also try to be an open book, but then, I don't know, I think, the career that I've got, it's been very difficult lately to be as honest as I would like, but you know, I don't know. Okay. So here are my thoughts on that. So on the one hand, I feel like yeah, you probably shouldn't fuck with people's kids without their consent. Like if you made that mandatory, I mean, I guess, I guess okay, when I, okay. I say there, I, I, I mean the parents, say, cause like you circumcise uh, kids what and is, shit. What is the definition of fuck with people's kids? Perform a surgery of some kind. I, I mean, okay, okay, but like, but like, the thing is, what if this happened, you know, at birth? It was a, it was a shot. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I'm thinking about like I was circumcised at birth, right? I mean, that's that's a thing that happened. I'm not against it, like, no, I, yeah, I mean, but I mean, it's definitely fucking with people's kids. But for like, sure, it was a surgery. <laughs> like what? Yeah, and the thing yeah. is, it was reversible. It didn't cause any defects. It wasn't noticeable. No. You just could not. Well, certainly noticeable. <laughs> impregnate someone or get yeah, pregnant. I see. Um, and this is like so hypothetical because this te- technology doesn't well, really. From that work. perspective, I like it, right? So, like, from the perspective yeah. of like having a kid should be a choice, like that, I, I like because I mean, like, accidental childbirth creates so many problems with poverty and kids that don't want to yeah, be there and, and adoption and like all mm-hmm. this fucking shit, you know, that doesn't wouldn't exist. Like, it just there's two sides to it like there's the apprehension comes from like i don't like the idea of the state mandating a procedure the for it comes Mm. from like i like the idea of people not being able to have a kid by mistake (laughs) i mean i just like i like the intentionality and the thing is it's reversible without like any any fees and you, you just have to say i want a child it's just not an accident. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. Like, I, I'm a socialist, so I really do like. I, I, I think that like a uh, benevolent government is good, um, if if they're making well and you know like 
good choices for the yeah. popular. I really do. I and it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to say. But like I, I don't know. I love to think about what the world would look like if every child was completely wanted. Um, yeah, no, like for sure. How, in that case, it psyche, seems like a positive thing. Yeah, I mean, like how how would the psyche of the generations to come change? I mean, if you feel like you, like from the moment you're born. Like, there is a space for you in this world that is made for you. Like, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. But then again, like, there's plenty of kids that were intentional where the parents and the kids still don't have a great relationship, right? Like, sure. I mean, sure. I mean, there's all these other demographics that, that are, like, I guess, variables that affect it. But, well, like, you and I have known each other for years. You know, I've you know, not been I great with my parents just, like, the whole time. Yeah, the baseline <laughs> would be so much higher. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I don't know. Like, is that eugenics? Maybe. Uh, do I think it should <laughs> apply to like any specific group? No, I just think everyone. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I'm not against it. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to get too political, but like, I I guess I'm less pro government than you are, and so yes. Oh, absolutely. My my opinion is like it's it's. Absolutely. I don't know that the government's capable of being benevolent on a large scale. Like, I feel oh, like... I don't... I don't... The thing is, this power's is corrupting. all wishful, fantastical sure. thinking on my yeah. part. <laughs> Do I think it will ever happen? Absolutely not. Fair enough. And I probably shouldn't be stating my politics as much, but it's fun to have these debates. Like, this is an interesting conversation. Oh, me. sure thing. I mean, the thing yeah. is... Uh, it's like, is it polite to, like you know, talk about politics. It's like, well, I mean, what is politics? Um, I, I mean, I got into quite yeah, an argument um, at uh, this startup I was working at um, because so they were focusing on health and uh, it was June. And as a queer person, I'm like, Pride Month, let's do a post on Instagram. And they're like, oh, we can't make it political. And that really hurt. I had never thought about just saying happy Pride Month, um, yeah, queers, like being political. Um, but the way <laughs> they saw it is it was extremely political. Mind you, um, I think yeah, it was 2018. Like I was in the Boston Pride Parade and I was the first float. The second cool. float behind us was Raytheon. So like- Raytheon had a pride float? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, Raytheon had a pride float? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They make missiles for anyone who's listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For it's the, fucking yeah, hilarious. It's Dude, I, I have a friend that worked there um, who <laughs> said they play Fox News in the break room, like, all the time. But he'll also wear, like, a French-made uniform to work, and nobody gave a fuck. So that's interesting that's that Raytheon had a, oh had a pride pair Yeah. I mean, he used, really to work for, he used to work awesome. for SKA. He would also wear a French-made uniform to, to work. You know, when he came into our office sometimes. When he felt what? like it, you know, and I don't give that's a shit. Beautiful. You know, wear whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so beautiful. I mean, yeah, Raytheon uh, sent me a recruiting email recently, and uh, I don't yeah. know if I'm... I'm, not, I'm not I don't feel like I'm Raytheon material. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they actually did try to recruit me at one point as well um, when I was in university. And I, I don't know. I just I don't like the idea of working on lethal systems at this point in my career. We'll see how I feel in a little bit, but yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I'm okay with non-lethal weapon systems right now. That's kind of where I'm at. But... <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, is it technically in interesting? For sure. Oh fuck yeah, it is. Are you kidding me? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, like my last interview was a uh, retired U.S. Army colonel. Like those guys command like 10,000 people. So it was interesting to talk to that dude. It was actually like a really, I don't want to say really, but it was a somewhat dry interview because he couldn't really, he didn't want to get into detail by the stuff he'd seen when he was at war. And so it was well, like very, sure. what's that? And I mean, trauma's a bitch too. I'm sure uh, that had to do with it, but I think a lot of it was just him trying to protect the confidentiality of the missions. Sure. I mean, uh, look, I think, you know, it'd be very interesting to uh, juxtapose uh, his command of, you know, 10,000 troops 
to like say a professional dominatrix. Yeah. Well, I don't know that that's his number. I just know that that's like approximately <laughs> what I've heard those people. But yeah, I mean, but a yeah, dominatrix yeah. is like one or two people, right? That's not like a similar. Uh, Go on. At a time, okay. but like, yeah, you know how many how many clients do they have? Also, some of them have many at a time, and they have like weird boot camps. You Interesting. Know? Yeah, yeah, uh, and you know, just asking when, questions like, about leadership. I don't know. <laughs> I don't understand that. Like, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to get into my sexuality too much because I'm trying to keep that decoupled from the show. But uh, I have thoughts on this. <laughs> okay. I for sure, for sure. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, so my like to get back to science. So like yeah, my sure. um my initial uh like. I guess draw to neuroscience was sure. sexual behavior. Cool. Um, and I started like I was like, yeah, human sexual behavior. Um, and so like at Rutgers, they have a human sexuality lab that uses imaging to look at like brains during orgasm. And I was like, that's fascinating. Oh, cool. But then some of the questions. What does that the brain look like during like, an orgasm? Very... What? What does uh, the brain look like? I... What regions light up? Complicated. Just, like, complicated. FMRI. Least, um, beautiful absolutely beautiful cool. uh also everybody's beautiful like, in the uh, orgasm you know, i think uh, physically i've never yeah, looked at like the brain one, uh yeah 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 um so like but i wanted to know like you know like what are like less like what are activation patterns so like how much glucose the brain is eating and more of like this cellular basis and how these yeah, circuits can does get, it like, cost a lot in terms of glucose to have an orgasm um, so when you look at an fMRI and you have like an area of the brain that like lights up, got it. Um, got what it. you're actually me measuring is roughly uh, glucose consumption. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, like you can also, uh, yeah, you could, yeah. So that's pretty much what you're doing. Um, and it's like, okay, so like the, the cells are using energy and then you have congregations of cells using em energy at the same time um and like it's uh it's a function on time um so yeah it's pretty cool and so uh i guess yeah so i started getting into like cellular molecular uh neuroscience um because i was more concerned with like the circuits and also like manipulating them oh cool uh, and you can't do that in humans um and so I started doing uh, mouse sex behavior uh, <laughs> every Friday for like almost two years. Um, and uh, we would sit here. I'm just giggling uh, because like some people talk about like what they do on a Friday night. You're like, I watch mouse oh as fuck. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. Mice. Oh my God, yeah. So like, I mean, like the scene was incredible. So we had this room that was set up and it was red lighting. Very white. Um, <laughs> And, and then, you know, we would be in, like, white coats, all the scientists. And then we had these aquariums with Holy angled balls. mirrors underneath them so we can see what's But they happening. wouldn't see what you were watching. So it wasn't, like, because I'm imagining that from the mouse's, the, the mouse's perspective, where it's like, oh, yeah. what are these fucking giants in suits doing here? Oh, oh, yeah. So we would, like, step back. We would have cameras pointed at the aquariums. We would drop two mice in, and we sit and be a little like okay intermission mouth like oh, Wait, say again i'm sorry on this one and so that's what i did every friday night <laughs> oh we would uh we would be scoring sexual behavior and be like okay mount mount two. Oh, he fell off intermission intermission up oh, and ejaculation uh and was so there ever popcorn involved like, i feel like that's a popcorn how... event <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was so funny. We're looking at how stress actually can disrupt sexual circuits. Oh, for sure it does. Um, 100%. Yeah. And so but the thing is, like, also stress in, say, like, adolescence could disrupt sexual behavior on the long term. In the long um, term. And then what That's my was on was uh, binge drinking and how binge drinking um, in adolescence can actually look like, um, look like, a, like a stressor. Interesting. And actually disrupt, would... disrupt behavior, both uh, like mood regulation behavior and like sexual circuits. Yeah. So you told me this last time, but I want to reiterate it for people listening. Like yeah. you, you injected ethanol into the mice, right? In order to make that so work. So I actually don't believe in those types of drug models. Um, okay. So What'd the thing is, uh, so I believe in self-administration models for everything from alcohol oh, to heroin. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't mean to misquote you. <laughs> 
Oh, no, no, absolutely. So, um, no one, it, no one that I know gets woken up in the middle of the night because mice are nocturnal and yeah. is given an injection of alcohol. That's not what happens. Maybe at they, Bill Cosby's house. You know, they go, through, now. <laughs> they go through drug seeking behaviors. They acquire the For alcohol. Sure. They drink it with their friends. It's social. Or then, you know, it's like social and then it's, it, it gets, you know, then there's like isolated drinking. So I, um, I offered uh, always water and food and then alcohol at, on an intermittent schedule. Um, because these are adolescent mice. So like most adolescents don't have uh, free access to alcohol all the time. They have to like wait until mom and dad are gone or they pay some bum to buy it for them. Yeah, I did that when I was a kid. Exactly. I mean, me too. Uh, (laughs) Hey! Uh, (laughs) And so I wanted it to be as relatable um, to the human experience as possible. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so it was pretty sweet. I'm sorry, I felt uh, really bad that I got that detail wrong. Now I feel like I oh yeah, no worries. And hear so the I'm full all story, about, yeah. uh, you know, self administration models. I don't think that you should force drugs on anyone. I agree, uh, <laughs> whether animal or human. And but like, but I, I mean, if you're if you're doing like a non elective brain surgery in one lab, it's not ridiculous to think that you know uh, you might be injecting booze, you know. Uh, oh, you know, non consensually sure. in another lab. I mean, like, that's, I don't know. Uh, it just seems you can see how I would have guessed it, but I'm glad you're not doing that. It's your model yeah, sounds superior exactly. I mean, in terms of results and I, ethics. I, I love, I love, I love, uh, I love surgery, but I'm not working with monkeys anymore. That makes sense. Uh, they are very sentient creatures. Um, however, important research is done in those models. Um, so, for example, we couldn't have uh, neurally controlled robotic arms without the help of monkeys. That is absolutely impossible. And we are not at the point where we know enough to eliminate animal models, but that is eventually a goal. Interesting. So, like, just to be clear, like, the reason that you're not doing that is because you don't enjoy putting a sentient creature through a surgery they don't want to be in. Not at all. I mean, I've always been like the rat whisperer. I like, I I love them as if they were my children. However, the research that I have done has all been absolutely necessary um, for the benefit of medicine, for humanity, for people suffering. Yeah. And so if I can do things like give my rats candy every day and tickle them and play games (laughs) with them and like make their lives really worth it, awesome yeah um good no that's so, great you know, yeah so it's not it's it wasn't it's it's not a forever thing um i will always love rats i will always I, i'll always be a consultant yeah. for how to improve animal welfare within laboratory research um i also think uh it's really important to 3d print them toys and things like that but you did that with your monkeys too um, i also think it makes better research what you did that with your monkeys too mm-hmm. yeah Yes. Uh, and like my monkeys got to watch movies and they got different food. And I mean, like, I don't know, one of my monkeys, uh, he was really into sweet potato sticks with Nutella. Interesting. So, you know. That actually sounds kind of good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or like another monkey, she really loved orange soda, but it needed to be flat. So she, she was special and got orange soda. Oh, cool. um, yeah. So like, you know, uh preferences are the the tang commercials with those monkeys on them oh my (laughs) god it's not totally wrong yeah like yeah the orangutan in space being like i love this (laughs) yeah you're like shit that's a real thing (laughs) indeed indeed yeah so you know it's not i i do think it's important for like (laughs) science communication uh to really understand that what you think is going on in a lab is not going on in a lab. And there's actually beautiful animal lovers like myself that are That's there awesome. making it Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult the, the science or, or what no, you do. No, no, no. I'm not offended at all. Cool. I'm hard to offend. Well, no shit. That's why we're still friends at this point. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say similarly. I mean, I don't know. Like, neither of us are very easily shook. I mean, if we were, we wouldn't still be talking to each other. 
that's very true that's very very true um <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so there was another um rat study that you talked about about novelty seeking behavior and you yeah, sort of alluded um, to it but it would be fun to kind of hear that story again just uh oh for sure yeah, for sure for so, posterity um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, this is when I was at McLean. Um, I I found that in female adolescent rats, uh, novelty seeking behavior, um, what both uh, I guess like as a behavioral expression um, as well as in the brain was predictive of later cocaine use um, and addiction. Yeah, and, and uh, later studies have shown that. Uh, this the same the same like i guess same pr predictive uh like so novelty seeking behavior or uh dis uh disinhibition of like of drug seeking behavior um or, or like saying no like saying no to drugs and just like being uninhibited in that way uh absolutely predicted cocaine addiction later in life um yeah uh i mean so the the rat that that preferred to not just hang out with its friends that it already knew, but to like be in a cage with an unfamiliar rat and engage with it. They, I mean, the, the numbers we Me. kept running them, they <laughs> seemed made up our, our, like our correlation coefficient was 0.99. Um, it seemed made wow. up. Um, yeah. But I don't uh, like cocaine. That's the, the interesting thing. Cause I, I, mm -hmm. I really enjoy meeting new people and trying new things, but I've never been interested in cocaine in the slightest. I mean, yeah, there, there's also the social perception. I mean, if you have not, it, I don't know, if, if cocaine was freely available and didn't have the negative perception of it, would you be into cocaine? I don't think I would. I could be wrong, right? I, yeah. I, I could be wrong. Yeah, I mean, I guess... This is going to sound bad, but I think part of the reason I, I don't love it is it just seems like a poor financial decision. Exactly. So what, yeah. if, it, what if it was freely available? Maybe. I mean, but I, it might be like doing like coffee. But right? you're like, also not a female adolescent. I'm also not a female adolescent. That's true. So the experiment <laughs> doesn't apply to me. Yeah. I'm also not a rat. Yeah, so, I mean, so from that perspective, I mean, it doesn't I mean, either. Yeah. And like uh, something that I postulate there has not been research to show this. Um, you may be more into, you know, because of this novelty seeking behavior, more into things like methamphetamine. Uh, <laughs> maybe. I, I don't, yeah. maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I have, I have some like kind of crazy really, beliefs. I haven't really given meth a chance. <laughs> and um, based on pH of dopaminergic neurons uh but you know well i uh, think one of the reasons i like research and development is because of novelty seeking behavior if i'm being honest like oh, one of the absolutely. reasons i'm so good at my job um just researching weird and interesting things all the time is because i'm a novelty seeker <laughs> so if you I'm tell me sure. you know like do you want to work on a prosthesis that's never been done before i'm like fuck yeah let's see if we can do this like do you want to build a surgical robot let's give it a go <laughs> do you yeah, do you so want to build like, you know like yeah i mean the thing is so you're fulfilled so there's this like very famous study where they basically gave rats like everything they gave them cool food sex partners friends it was like a complex drugs city. food sex and drugs all the yep. all the stuff and yeah they didn't abuse drugs if they were stimulated enough and like were actually able i think that makes sense Oh, it totally does. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like, drugs can definitely be boring. Yeah, yeah, completely. I mean, I, I, I'm like, I'm like, why would I want to? Why would I want to do drugs when I can like live your you life? Know, have, yeah, live my life. <laughs> start start a mushroom farm so I can I can build leather clothing like for very cheap. Yeah, like why not? That shit's interesting. Like, like you're trying to solve exactly. really really challenging stuff, and that's stimulating i mean to say the least exactly so yeah. you know but the thing is it's it's like as soon as you have deprived conditions um then 
you know, whether it's forced or self-administration models, the rats are doing drugs and the people start doing drugs. So, you know, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. You, ha you have kids in public school and they're like not engaged with their community. They don't have many hobbies. What do they do? Drugs, because it's easy. Yeah. And like, we all need to find these things that like stimulate us and like get us excited about life. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, we fall susceptible. So you're to... almost doing the same thing. I mean, you're, you're releasing dopamine, but you're doing it a different mm -hmm. way. Like, because I mean, I, I <laughs> it's going to sound bad, but I, I, I have had some things happen at Forum Logic recently where I've, I've been the director of advanced projects for the past couple of months, as, as the listeners probably uh, know by now. But there's not that many of them, so the listener probably knows by now. <laughs> um, but uh, that job is pretty interesting. And I remember we were really, really rushing to meet a crazy deadline. We were, we've moved in $8 million in machine tools like these past couple of months um, to a new factory. And so um, a lot of that's been, I mean, it's been a bunch of us working really, really hard, but my role in that has been, you know, I remember at the end of one week, you know, I, I moved in a bunch of these machines and we overcame some obstacles and, you know, there were, there were some challenges there. I can't remember what exactly happened, but, you know, it was, you know, it was, we're doing work. <laughs> so I just remember saying to, I think I said it to the CEO, I was like, Oh my God, what a rush. You know, like, like I was, I was, I was right? excited by it. What's that? Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, like I have definitely seen that if I didn't have art, I would probably do a lot of drugs, but like, yeah, I'm yeah maybe I would be tempted uh, by that world if I wasn't doing the things I'm doing now. If I was, yeah, if I had no creative outlets, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, like, but I much rather uh learn how to make fireworks that's well, much more interesting <laughs> yeah <know? laughs> yeah well, and like you, you can look back on it and you feel good you, you don't feel like you wasted your whole day or your life and you know it's all it's exciting right i mean you're just like you're just like fuck i contributed something like people also found that interesting i feel good this is helping humanity this is helping me this is you know it's still dopaminergic i mean this is great exactly yeah. um and that gives me a really really cool uh idea for the name of my art science lab i think i'm just gonna call it dopamine nice <laughs> teamwork yeah thank you thank you You're welcome, uh, I've, been, I've, been, I've been playing with like i'm like okay like anna rock studio i'm just gonna call it dopamine i also like like I love the idea of being like, yo, I'm heading to dopamine. Like, want to come? Like, we're kind of a new, uh, project. Like, love fuck it. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right? Who doesn't love dopamine? Um, <laughs> yeah. The best drug there is. Yeah. You good? <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Oh, that's so cool. You're the first person um, to do an interview from a car, by the way. This is awesome. I mean, he, I, it's a, it's a car, it's a car that's in progress. This car is so cool. Um, maybe yeah, I'll is. do a photo shoot, uh, with it. That'd be awesome. You should. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Throw it in there. Um, I mean, it just seemed like the best place to go. We can make that the cover if you have them ready by Sunday. By Sunday? No, it actually, it would have to be sooner because I would have to have Alicia make I a cover do, out I of it. Do it. I can do it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. If you send it, um, cool. I'll send it to our graphics person. We'll make a cover out of it. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll do like some weird pinup thing with my partners, like on the car <laughs> being weird. My dog. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, if, there's, if yeah. your partners are in it though, it might be confusing because they might be like, you know, okay, cool. Then it'll just be me and my dog. Yeah. I'm not against okay, it. Cool. Like, I mean, take those pictures too and yeah. send them. You know? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll, we'll I would, I would like to see your partners now. I haven't met them yet. Like that'd be fun. Oh, yeah, Grace and Joe are great. They're, yeah. they're lovely. That's lovely, awesome. lovely. Oh, yeah. that's the guy that was here earlier that you were talking to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's he cool. set up lights in the car and was like, yeah. Oh, okay. So I remember what those lights remind me of. So when I was yeah. uh, an intern at SpaceX, they had this four year stock vesting. It was four or five. It might have been five. I think it was one year cliff and then four additional years of vest. I'm not remembering it correctly. It was. Four or five years of stock options. I was only an intern. 
But one guy came in and he had these LED lights all over and he was wearing a vest, like a tuxedo vest. And he goes, I'm fully vested. It was so I cute. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it was it was pretty amazing. <laughs> so really, really happy to it just made me smile, right? And I think that's what he was trying to do. Oh, for sure. For sure. That's adorable. Yeah, it was very adorable. <laughs> I really think people should wear more LEDs. Um, I think that'd be lovely. <laughs> yeah, I'm not against it. I actually had another guy on the show who um worked for he was the VP of innovation for a company called um it was Color Kinetics, and they got purchased by Philips for seven hundred and thirty million dollars, I think. Oh my Around god! There. Yeah, they were what? like one of the first LED lighting companies. Um, they they did colored LEDs, and so they had. I think they used like a DMX five twelve standard, but I might be wrong on okay. that. Yeah. And they they did like big LED spotlights um, for like public displays and stuff, and this guy Kevin. Um, Actually, his his personal email address is really funny. I'll tell it to you after the show, but he's he's really yeah. cool. He's like he's like um, definitely like like a younger boomer, um, and he's he's a he's a friend. <laughs> like I like him a lot. Um, yeah. But he was telling me about um, so for, he's very proud of the work he did for Color Kinetics, and and the, he's now the CEO of a company called Carta. But he um, was telling me about. Um, they recorded this, I can repeat it, but it was, um, they created this product that was like a viable, um, you know, LED, and he had pre-sold, I think, 50,000 of them to some artist in California, and he, Philips Lamp Group called him up and said, I don't think we're ready for this product, and he was like, uh, but I've pre-sold 50,000 of them, like, what do you mean? You know, and they're like, well, you know, it's, the time's not right, and he's like, uh, what if we just, you know, and he talked to his, um, Boss is like, what if we just give him all the profit? And he's like, yeah, just see what happens. And so he's like, what if we give you all the profit? And the guy's like, uh, what are you trying to pull? And so finally he agrees to it. And he said that his uh, product manager called him up in tears. And she was in, um, I believe it was Shanghai. And she said, Phillips is here and they're shutting down our line. You know, and they, because it was a threat to the incandescent bulb business to have LEDs at that point. And so they, they dismantled it. Mm -hmm. I know, that, to me, that was really interesting. <laughs> I'll take him out to Austin one of these weekends. Oh, for sure. For sure. That'd be awesome. Um, Yeah, quite unfortunately, like, I am... I'm possibly moving very soon. Oh, where are you moving to? Uh, East Austin. Um, cool. Not my house. I came back home and... Uh, there were fruit flies in the kitchen, maggots in the uh, pantry, and Balls. bed bugs in my bed. That ain't good. Yeah. So, I, I'm like very, oh, and everyone has COVID. And I'm like, oh, fuck this. Oh, I'm this out. wasn't like a tiny home. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh. Yeah. So I think I'm going to get like a cute little like tiny home for me and my dog. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I kind of like, like, I don't know. I kind of like living on my own. It gives me flexibility right now. Like, I, I probably, again, I'm trying to talk my personal life, but whatever. We're having this conversation. So, yeah. 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 I mean, I've never lived alone. I've only lived in art communes. Um, in Boston, too, when I visited you that one yeah. time. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. And You've so, always like, lived in art communes? That's, that's fucking wild, Let's dog. See. Um, yeah. All right. Yep. <laughs> So I lived in a fraternity uh, my first two years of college, and then I started an art commune, and then I did that, and then uh, there was like a year transition period, and yeah, pretty much. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smitten. I'm smitten. They're great. They're I'm glad. Great. I'm glad you have that in your life. Ugh. Um, <laughs> I I like them a lot. Um, That's good. Ugh. 
Ugh. Um, yeah, you're like I'm disgustingly really in love. That's good to see. I'm like disgustingly in love. Oh my god. <laughs> and I'm like, and like as soon as I'm like getting like distracted, like the other one of this couple, this power couple, is just like in my face, and I'm like, Ugh. I love you. Ugh. I'm glad you have that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> disgustingly in love. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna live alone, and it's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah that makes sense yeah i've lived alone for quite a while i mean occasionally like someone will live with me for a little bit but for the most part it's it's like me with little bursts of like somebody living with me for a little bit and then it'll be mostly me <laughs> yeah yeah so it goes so it goes i mean i like that they have their own life uh and yeah i have an art studio and a place with a place with my dog like bliss absolute bliss yeah well so my yeah. place actually is is like two parts shop to one part living space cool i really want to visit at some point yeah please um, like you're welcome to stay with me anytime cool cool that sounds awesome um yeah i i definitely am uh i can show you form plan. logic as well if you come out here um i should say when cool. you come out here yeah <laughs> Yeah, I might um, even be able to get you into the so, Carnegie Mellon Field Robotics Center. I've got oh, still actually, a lot of friends Carnegie over there. Carnegie Mellon has an art science center that I've been wanting to check out. There you go. I don't know anybody cool. there, so you'd be on your own for getting in. <laughs> um, I think I know a few people there. Well, there you go. I think I do. I think the, the art science community. Yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. 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 Yeah, we could swing that. Yeah, I would love to set it up and. Yeah, as long as I can bring my dog. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. That's awesome. As long as your dog's not a dick to my cat. <laughs> no, she's very she's very good to uh, all animals. Good. Um, yeah, I've actually I've been playing basketball with my dog all day. It's been okay. <laughs> That's awesome. I've been thinking yeah, about it... another pet actually. So I'm between. Um, oh, yeah? I was looking at Savannah cats. Uh, two other people have told me not to do an F one or an F two. So you're not the I... only one. I wouldn't, I really wouldn't do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I mean, like, uh, I knew some guy actually from Austin, Texas. He was at the Harvard, Harvard School of Education. He had an F1 and an F7. And he was like, do not, like, he had signs all around his apartment. Do not let the cats be in the bathroom with you because they will try to slit your throat. In the bathroom? Yeah, so it's, as soon as the bizarre. cat was cornered in the bathroom with the person, oh, I it see. would try to, like, scratch out the person's neck. Fuck. That was the yeah. F1 or both of them? Uh, the F1, definitely. The F7 was a little weird. And then, um, I don't know, like, he also... I'm surprised the F1 had, didn't try to eat the like, F7 from what I've heard. Meat in one day. Say again? His, uh, his cats ate three ounces of weed in one day. Holy shit yeah why do they just like the taste of marijuana yep that's that's bizarre yeah. what happened like i mean does that get ingested or i mean does that enter the blood brain barrier i mean or? i i don't know i don't know he, he i mean i mean that must have sucked if he were, paid for all that were, weed didn't it? <laughs> yeah i mean like i have my like you know three crazy, ounces crazy holy, holy shit but they're they're wild animals. They're not domesticated. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't know. I still kind of want like maybe an F three or an F four, but like I don't know. Hang out with one for a while. Okay, that's probably a good idea. I don't want to just yeah. get a pet because I like the way it looks, which is how I feel about those animals right now. I think they're cool. It's cool that they're big and spotted. Definitely. Our dogs also have empathy. Yeah, I mean, I think my cat has empathy. Maybe she does. I mean, domesticated cats have empathy, but yeah. like Savannah cats, they're wild animals. Interesting. So they're just murderous. Yeah. Yeah. Feisty, feisty, feisty. I, I talked to a buddy of mine who's a veterinarian, and he was the one that kind of talked me out of the F1 or the F2, like, because he's mm -hmm. seen all of this shit. And he was telling me yeah. that, like, you know, they had, like, they had to, like, corner it in the off. Like, it was bad. Like, they, it was, like, fucking, you know, running all over the office. And 
I don't know, I've had a pet snake and that's pretty, you know, instinctual and, and you know, not really thinking more just yeah. acting. Yeah, but like they have a they have a reptilian brain <laughs> and not a mammalian brain. Which is and what a cat has. That's interesting. Prefrontal cortex. Oh my god. And you get claws and bangs. So it's the creativity coupled with the um, yes. instinct that makes it uh, dangerous. Creativity and problem solving behavior. Interesting. So, like, give me an yeah. example besides trying to slit your throat in the back. Because <laughs> that doesn't sound creative. Um, that just sounds vicious. I mean, I mean, like, uh, uh, I don't know, a good friend of mine lived with this awful cat. Um, oh, God, he's so gross. His name was Marvin. And Marvin Android. had eye herpes and would like to shake his face in your face and get goop all over you. Gross. He was, he was a disgusting little cat, and he was always covered in, like, poop. He was just gross. And he got <laughs> abandoned. Like, oh, at, at this apartment. And, like, no one knew who, like, originally owned him. Whatever. That's, like, the and opposite. Marvin like, cats are usually self-grooming. And so what he did was he destroyed the coffee maker six times because it was what the th what all the humans seemed to love. Holy shit. Yeah. That's that interesting. Is, that, that is fucked up. That's fucked up. For sure. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh grace <gasps> uh, oh my god oh my god uh, mm, mm. i have no idea what's going on <laughs> i don't need to know <laughs> grace is just modeling uh this amazing sequin robe thing um yeah at 8 30 i have to meet this fashion designer um so that's five oh minutes from now my god all right should oh. we wrap up yeah 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 all right is there anything you want to plug um <laughs> i would love to plug my website and uh so a n n a dash r o c k dot com uh, which has links to all of my social media, my YouTube channel, and then we'll hopefully be having office hours to my new art science lab called Dopamine at the Heart Yard in Austin, Texas. Sweet. I'm glad you were able to name that. Yeah! <laughs> and a really, really fun hanging out with you. Um, you're one of my favorite humans in the world. This has been great. Oh, Thank you for coming and doing this. I adore you, and this has been a you. pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> if you stuck around this long and you like what you've heard, please give us a like and smash that subscribe button or smash that like button and give us a subscribe we're always looking for new and interesting people to have on the show if you know anyone good send an email to podcast at ska.solutions or leave a comment below thanks again for listening and please come to the next one